I have done multiple videos on animating instances with geometry nodes, but those are all linear animations. Today I want to look at another kind of animation, for example these uh, swaying animations. And the beauty of these animations is that the instances can have overlap in their animation and they can have random rotation of all the variation you can think of because that is the beauty of geometry nodes, right? Yeah, let's see how we can achieve a result like this or, or how we can achieve a result like this. This is for an upcoming video I did, uh, which uses the same principle, just slightly different. Instead of using a rotation, I'm using it on this scale, but it's the same difference. So let's see how we can recreate this. Let me bring up my geometry nodes panel. I'm gonna split the viewport, go to the geometry nodes panel. This is the node tree we're gonna recreate. And I'm gonna say duplicate because I wanna keep it just to be sure. And tutorial. Okay. So we're gonna delete all of these. And that leaves us with this node setup. So what I have is I have a mesh circle right here, which I transform up on the Z axis. So that it's level with the uh, with the um, with the stage itself. The stage is right here. Using that as a plane for our uh, instances, so distribute points on faces. I'm just going through this in a bit of a hurry because it's not the focus of this tutorial, but I want to keep it in there. Distribute points on faces. Our points are gonna be spheres, and the only thing I altered is that the pivot point is not in the center. The origin is not in the center, but it is located at the bottom. Um, you can see later on why that is important in this instance. It doesn't really matter for the tutorial, but keep that in mind that I changed that. Uh, all right, so uh, distribute points on faces. You can see our points right here. Uh, instances on points. So we can have our uh, spheres positioned on our points we just saw. That just basically changes them uh, <laughs> to spheres in this case. Then I have a translate instances node. So we can randomly per instance change the location. I just wanted that on the Z axis and you can change the value right here. I don't want them to go below the stage, of course, because we won't see that only upward. So th that's why I left all of these on zero. Perfect. Then if we join those two together, let's use the set materials. Um, and then where's my viewer here? There you go. Let's delete that. Perfect. We're going to start off the same. We're going to need a node to transform our instances. And in this case, like I said before, I wanted, I wanted to have them scaled. So scale instances. I'm going to place that in between here. And by changing this value, we can animate our spheres. Of course, we can do that by hand, setting a keyframe for all of these, right? But we don't want to do that. We want to keep it procedural. That's why we're here, right? Um, search for scene and select scene time. You can either choose for seconds or for frame. This will put out a number every second or of course every frame. So in every second there is 25 frames or whatever your frame rate is, of course. Mine is set to 24, I believe. Yeah, 24. Um, but it's fine. So I'm going to, I'm going to stick with seconds and from there. Let's first plug it into the scale. The scale is, of course, a vector value. It has three channels, the X, Y, Z. Of course, that doesn't matter because we want to scale them uniformly. So one value, one float value in a vector scale works perfectly fine. What we can see now is they start at zero or at one because my, my timeline starts at one instead of zero. You can see when I go to zero, they are completely disappearing. So from one, they just scale up till the end of time, I guess. But this is a linear animation, like I said before. What I want instead is a oscillating animation. And of course, there's one node that could help us with that. Get our seconds and search for a math node. We all see a sine curve that goes up and down, up and down, right? You can use the cosine as well. That is just the inverted wave of the sine wave. If we now plug this in, you can see they are scaling up from zero to one and apparently also scaling down from zero to minus one. Uh, that is not what I want. So we have to tweak it a little bit further. I want to duplicate this sine wave, uh, duplicate the node, of course, set it to multiply instead. And when we put it in front of our sine wave, we can adjust it by, say, uh, multiply by 12. We can adjust this 
so the time is faster. So this is basically the same as this value. If you add a noise modifier in the graph editor, um, you can see that this is basically the same as using the scale, only it works the other way around. Here, a higher value makes it slower. Um, and for us, a higher value makes it faster. And you can see that our sphere down here is also oscillating in a more noisy pattern. The next thing I want to do is I want to control the, the range of the scaling. So probably, you know, what I'm suggesting here is that we're going to add a um, mapping range node in between. And as you can see, that limits it from 0 to 1 instead of minus 1 to 1, like we had before. So bring that back to 0. So now we have our value for the time. We can control that with our multiply. You can also set it to divide if you want to. That just works in the opposite direction. Uh, the sine is our sine wave. And then we have our mapping range node that we will use to define our range of our scaling motion. So far, so good. But of course, we want to leverage the power of geometry nodes. And the power of geometry nodes, in my opinion, is that we can randomly make variations between instances. First of all, let me show you how to do it on a non-animated basis. So delete this, use the random value node like I just brought into the scene, plug that into the scale value. And as you can see right here, our instances now pop to a different size per instance. There are two things I like to do with this random value node. First, I'm gonna randomly offset the start time of every index, of every instance, I mean. We're gonna use this random value node and we're gonna put it down here. Move everything a bit out of the way. What I want to do is I want to grab this multiply node, set it to either add or subtract, whatever you like. Grab it, place it in between here, and I'm going to add the scene time to a random number. We're going to set this random number to, in my case, I'm going to do minus 15 and plus 20. For example, when the scene time is two seconds, in my case, that is 50 frames, the random value node will subtract 15 or add 20 randomly to every instance. And those are minimum and maximum values. So it can be anywhere in between as well. Of course, we can't see it right now because it's not plugged in. So we have to plug it into the scale. And there you go. So this is without any randomization. And now we can add the randomization in. And there you go. Uh, and of course, this value shouldn't be in here. This happened when I showed you the difference between the two. That's perfect. We have now a stable factor right here. And this also gives a nice effect. This, this will mean that the, um, that the scaling will increasingly get faster, as you can see right here on the left. Of course, that's not what I want. I want a stable factor. I want 12 in my case, or whatever you like. We can also do 24, it's fine. Doesn't really matter, but this just keeps the pacing the same throughout the whole animation. Then again, what I'd like to do is add a little bit more randomization in there. I'm gonna duplicate this, then maybe reset it to the default values. Grab another multiplication node. Uh, I want to multiply this value. Then when we set this to a higher value, so the minimum shouldn't be zero because we don't want them to disappear. Uh, and you can maybe go a little bit beyond. So maybe 1.2 or something, whatever you like. Uh, that got me thinking about, uh, I didn't change the mapping range node. That's why they still are disappearing uh, to a value of zero that is. So we have set the from min to from max to uh, zero and one. But the two min and two max should be set to, let's say, 1.2 and 1.5. That makes them a little bit too big for my liking. So maybe bring them down. You can use a combination of these two. Uh, so maybe bring them down. So I'm going to use 1.1 1 .1 and 1.35. And also make sure you don't have clamping on. If I uncheck the clamping, you can see now that it is more fluent. Let's see the difference one more time. This is more like a heartbeat. Uh, this is more fluently bubbly, right? Now, just to be complete, I like to show you the no tree on of the other scene. Again, a swaying motion. This is nothing different from what we have seen before. Scene time, random value. Here I'm subtracting. Uh, you can also add it doesn't matter. Same thing again, using a sine, or you can also, again, use a cosine. I'm using here a divide node. Again, I don't know why, but you can also use a multiply node. This is just a opposite way of doing things. For this instance, of course, I'm using a rotation uh, value that is a vector. Again, the scale is also a vector, but usually you want to scale in a uniform manner. 
in this example, I want to rotate, but only on one axis. So that's why I'm using a combine XYZ. This gives me the opportunity to only target the X value, feeds into the rotation instances here. And then again, there's another uh, rotate instances that are set to minus pi and pi for the maximum. This rotates them on the Z axis, so they're not all the same looking. That's a nice to get even more randomization in your scene. Uh, you can also watch this video that will give you a much more in-depth view of animation, shading, modeling, procedurally in geometry nodes. Uh, I hope you liked it and I'll see you next time. Ciao.